Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Well, not really actually. The day I'll be filming this, it's not my birthday, but the day that you see this, it will be my birthday, the 29th of January, and I'll be turning 22. So I thought I would do a video that I just really enjoy and just really wanted to do for my birthday. And one of the fun videos that I filmed in the past was that if you liked this book, then you'll like this book video. And since then, I've been thinking of some more ones that could fit for that theme. So we're doing a part two. If you like this book, then you'll like this one. Let's get right into the books. I've got a few comparisons here for you and we're going to start off with Illuminae by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman and I think if you enjoyed the science fiction adventure that was Illuminae in a spaceship then you might also really enjoy Seven Devils by Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb. So Seven Devils is a space opera book and it follows these characters who are fighting against an empire and the empire is a dictatorship, it's really horrible and it's awful and they've got colonialist expansion plans and it's up to the resistance to stop them and in the resistance there are Chloe and Eris who are two girls that don't get along they have a bit of a history and they are enemies and they have to work together on this mission to thwart the empire and I thought it was so fun kind of like Illuminae it was just very readable you can get through it quite quickly and it's a space adventure they both have a lot to do with traveling through the galaxy and a spaceship and while this one is not the mixed media format that Illuminae is I think if you enjoy this book you could also enjoy this science fiction adventure as well. I have one for if you enjoyed The Hate You Give by Andrew Thomas and Andrew Thomas's book is very much focused on police brutality but it also touches on gang crime themes and I feel like Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds could be a good one for you to read if you enjoyed The Hate You Give. This one focuses more so on gang crime and it's a novel in verse and it talks about the revenge cycle and the justice cycle in gang crime. So in this one we follow someone's brother and his older brother was murdered in gang crime and he decides that he wants to get revenge on the person that's done it and it follows him. It's very quick read but it was just very impactful and important and I think kind of like The Hate You Give, it touches on some really important themes in terms of racism and yeah, I think you could like this one if you like The Hate You Give as well. Up next, if you liked The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which is a Greek mythology retelling about Patroclus from Patroclus's perspective about Achilles and then also about what happens in the very long war and Achilles and Patroclus are lovers in this one then you will also appreciate The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This one is quite a different story to Song of Achilles. It's not a romantic story. We're following the events that happen in Song of Achilles but from the perspective of the woman during this war and especially from Bryce's perspective and this one was very emotionally heavy and hard-hitting. It deals a lot with sexual assault so be warned for that when you go into it but having read this one first and then reading this one afterwards it gave me a lot of food for thought about war and how the perspective and the way that you approach war can really shift your experience with war and I feel like making a comparison video between these two actually because it was just such an interesting read. Sons of the Gods was such an interesting read and having loved the Song of Achilles thinking of these two together was just blowing my mind in different various ways. You can draw a lot of connections and parallels between them both and Patroclus and Achilles are again companions in the Silence of the Girls. So yeah, very, very interesting one. If you've read both of these, I'd love to hear more of your thoughts. I've got a bit of a Dark Academia recommendation. So if you enjoyed The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So this one follows these students at university and they are a very tight friendship group, but they decide to go beyond the bounds of normal mortality and that has consequences and in a similar vein we've got If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. So If We Were Villains is also Dark Academia and also the same out-of-bounds morality that happens in The Secret of History goes down in If We Were Villains and it's also about morality and such and it's also got a tight friendship group at the centre of the book. However this one puts a bit more of a Shakespeare spin on it because the students are Shakespearean focused students and it also reads a bit like a play in some ways and the Shakespeare plays are deep themes have deep themes and connections to what happens in this book but I think if you like the secret history you will like if we were villains in fact I liked if we were villains even more than the secret history 
I didn't particularly like The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, but if you did like The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, I would recommend to you Glitterland by Alexis Hall. So this is also an adult romance, this is an MM romance, and in The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, you get a workplace romance where it's also a competition, so there's enemies to lovers there, but it's quite a grumpy sunshine Book. You have a grumpy main character in The Hating Game and you also have a sunshine main character in The Hating Game and similarly in Glitterland you've got one grumpy character and one sunshine character so if you liked that dynamic then you might like that dynamic here as well. There's no enemies to lovers side to this book but I think it does the playoff of them coming from different areas of life, different backgrounds and just different experiences very very well. In The Hating Game both of these characters have had very different life growing up experiences and that comes into the play a bit and I feel like that comes into play a bit here as well. In this one we follow just a grumpy character who has a one night stand with this very Essex lad who's really sunshiny and it's after that one night stand that kind of turns into a bit more but they've got some class difference between them and they have to overcome that and I thought it was fantastic and brilliant whereas I didn't like the hating game that much so really recommend this one instead. So if you liked Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier I've got two books that I want to recommend to you and those those books are Passing by Nana Larson and The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson and I have different reasons for why these ones go together and I'll start with The Haunting of Hill House. So in Rebecca I felt like the house was a very, the manor I should say, is a very important part to the story. It's kind of personalised and all of the people within the manor, like the staff, also have a very impact, big impact on the plot that goes down and I feel like in a similar vein The, ha the Haunting of Hill House has the house personified and a big part of the story and also the staff within Hill House have a big impact on the story and add to the re gothic feeling that it brings so I think if you liked the house and the staff in Rebecca you'll also like it in The Haunting of Hill House. The Haunting of Hill House is about a uh, house that is haunted and somebody who's in into the supernatural decides to go there to see what it's all about and he invites three people to stay with him. And then in Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier as the title says, Rebecca, there is a female character who kind of eclipses one of the characters in the book. That female character is the core focus even though we're not following that female character and I feel like the same thing happens in Passing by Nella Larson where we're following our main character but her character is sometimes eclipsed and overshadowed by another female character who is very important. So I felt like both of those do the eclipsing of character based on another stronger personality woman very very well and if you like that aspect of Rebecca you'll like this one and Passing is about these two girls one of which both of which are black and they can both pass as white and one of them decides to live the white passing life and one of them does not and it's about their experiences when they meet again after several years. Okay so this is a if you like this then you'll like this but it's also a double recommendation because if you liked More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera I think you'd like My Heart and Other Black Holes. So first I want to talk about More Happy Than Not with the other ones I didn't give a synopsis of the main book but for this one I think I should because I feel like it's one of Silvera's underrated books but in my opinion it's actually the best Adam Silvera book that he's written. It's his debut and in this one we follow this character who is not too happy with his life but he's trying to be more happy than not and he's got a girlfriend that he really likes but when this new guy shows up on his block he starts to feel very interested in this guy and possibly even romantically. There's a lot more to this story. It's quite character driven but it also is existing in this world where your memory can be tampered with and I thought it added a very interesting aspect to the story. I thought this book was absolutely brilliant but it deals with a lot of heavy topics such as suicide and suicide attempts as well as depression and I feel like my Heart and Other Black Holes also deals with this topic very sensitively. I recently talked about this one in my Best Books of 2020 video and yes this is another book that focuses on suicide because we've got two teens who feel suicidal and they meet each other to be able to create a pact and it's very emotionally heavy just like More Happy Than Not and we follow these characters and we get to hear about their reasons why they feel this way and you also get to see some of the secondary characters or characters in their lives that fail them or don't fail them in certain ways and I feel like that can be said of both of these books. We've got these teenagers who are really struggling emotionally and mentally and you see how everybody else reacts to them or doesn't react and yeah, they're very both emotionally heavy journeys, ones that I predict people will cry about 
or cry when they read them and I really recommend both of them. Both of these were five stars for me. The next recommendation is one that I talked about in the wrap-up for this book as well and that is if you liked Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen then you'll probably also like Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So this one is a big chunky Russian classic but like with Pride and Prejudice it also has unlikable main characters and the unlikable main characters are giving you some commentary on different things such as class, such as love and romance and family and I feel like that's exactly what Pride and Prejudice was doing. So while Pride and Prejudice wasn't the classic for me and I wouldn't say that this was quite the classic for me, I know that Pride and Prejudice works for a lot of people and if that worked for you, this is probably going to work for you too. So I just had to pair these two together. And in this one, we follow Anna Karenina, but we also follow quite a big cast of other people. And it's about what happens when you fall in love with someone, but they might not be the person that you can be with. So for example, what if you fall in, some, in love with someone, but you're actually married to somebody else? Or what if you fall in love with someone, but you're not sure whether you like him more than this other guy? And it talks about all of that and the family dynamics and the consequences socially, politically, economically economically of all of these choices that the characters make and yeah a lot of them are unlikable but it's got a lot of commentary to it. The next one is Bear Town by Frederick Backman. Again I've talked about this in my best reads of 2020 video so if you'd like to learn more about what this one is about definitely go over there but I'm gonna say that if you like this book and you want to read some non-fiction that has to do with the subject matter of this book you should read Eggshell Skull by Brie Lee. So Eggshell Skull is a memoir and it's set in Australia because that's where Brie Lee is from and it's about her as an intern for a lawyer and they work on sexual assault cases so you get to see about the law system in terms of handling sexual assault cases some of the sexism that is embedded in the law system when it comes to dealing with those kind of cases and also some of the emotional impact such a case has because Brie Lee also talks about her own personal experience with the law system in this case and I also mentioned that one on my best books of 2020 list but I think if you liked this fiction book you can try that non-fiction book and if you like this non-fiction book you can also try this fiction book. We've got two more to go here and this one is if you like the grim fairy tales I'd recommend you try Oscar Wilde's fairy tales. Now the grim fairy tales are very dark, they're very fantasy focused so while they're dark it's all in a fantasy setting and it seems very interesting but then I feel like Oscar Wilde's fairy tales are dark in a different way. They're kind of a bit more focused and grounded in reality or at least the topics and and themes that it brings up are more grounded in reality I feel like even though it's still kind of set in fantasy and I feel like both of them have very dark fairy tales with quite grim not no pun intended but quite grim endings sometimes but I really liked wild fairy tales for the messages that it delves into and the imagery that it uses and I think if you like the fun and also the darkness of the grim ones you'll also like it for wild fairy tales and then last but not least, if you liked the book Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, but if you liked the book Annihilation, I would also recommend you read The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. So Annihilation is about this science experiment and there's this mysterious area where if you go into it, none of the people who go there return. So they send out like a probe group of women to just investigate, to go there, investigate and report back. And it's very strange science fiction. It's really weird and it's abstract but it was so good and it was so compelling and it had an open ending as well and I think if you like the strangeness and the weirdness of Annihilation you're also going to like the strangeness and the weirdness of the water cure. So the water cure is set on this island where there's these daughters, this family living essentially and these daughters have been taught certain things about the world and that the water is poisonous and that men are evil but maybe some of those things that they've been taught come into question when some men end up stranded on their island. And yeah, it was a very interesting read, but it was very strange and weird. And it had that kind of tone that Annihilation did. And it also has a bit of an ambiguous ending, just like Annihilation. But like Annihilation, I thought it did it very, very well. So if you like that one, you'll probably like this one too. And there you have it. Those are all my, if you like this book, then you'll probably like this book recommendation. I had a lot of fun doing it last time and it was so much fun doing it again. Please let me know in the comment section if you've read any of these or if you're going to pick up any of these recommendations. would love to hear it and if I come up with more ideas, I might even do a third one in this video series now, I guess. 
Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't you forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video, it would be a great birthday present to me and you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!